Good morning, everybody. 7.21 a.m. Eastern Time, October 6, 2017. Happy Friday. Um, all right, so anyway, we are following Tropical Storm Nate. Um, it has left the north coast of Honduras. It is in the warmest water it's going to be in during its trip. So now today is a very critical day, guys, for a few reasons, and I've explained this uh, over the last couple videos. Uh, this warm water here, our prime, uh, prime area for hurricanes. So what we're seeing right now is uh, Nate was stalled out a little bit while it went through uh, Nicaragua and also Honduras, causing uh, many deaths in these areas due to flooding. So it is a rainmaker, lots of rain. There were... Uh, areas with 20 inches of rain, if you see my mouse right here, that's from the, the rain being pulled from the ocean and onto those uh, steep mountain sides, and then it, for, it rolls down and then begins flooding. Those are some high numbers, so Nate is a rainmaker. We're going to see just how much uh, influence it has based if it touches uh, Cancun, Mexico. Now, I want you to notice something with these models. They are beginning to shift a tad to the east, and that's what we were worried about. There's a system here that's uh, going over Florida currently that's a low system, and low systems attract low systems. So I think what's happening is that system is beginning to pull Nate a little bit to the right or to the east, and that's my concern here. Now, I want to explain something which I've done in the last couple of videos. Some people are just not understanding what I'm trying to say here. If this storm... Uh, shoots through the gap and misses Cancun altogether, that's where we're going to see the potential for those higher grade hurricanes. The reason that the Hurricane Center and most places are saying Category 1 or 2 is because they're basing that off current data. So yes, that is correct based on what's happening now. If everything stays true and this thing clips Cancun, it will stunt its growth and then it's just going to have this part of the Gulf to here to grow. And yes, there's still potential for a 2 or 3 storm at that point. My point being is that if it shoots the gap, if this thing continues to shift to the east and shoots the gap, it will have no land interaction. Those are where the risks, risks come in for categories 3 to 5. That's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. And if you've noticed again, last night I pointed out this black triangle line here is the current direction. It's not a spaghetti plot to where the storm is going. It's the current direction. And if you notice, it keeps shifting to the east. Yesterday, or last night rather, in the video, it was around this area right here. And then a couple hours before that, it was into Texas. So the, the actual route of this storm is shifting eastward. If it continues to do that, you're going to notice more of these models moving into this gap. If you notice now, there's only a few models that have it clipping Cancun now. So this thing may very well shoot the gap. And if it has no land interaction, that's where we may see that rapid growth. It is trying to reform itself right now after making land contact with uh, Nicaragua and Honduras. Uh, that did stun its growth. It didn't slow it down. It's actually the the... Wind speed has raised to 45, and the pressure's dropping. When you see the pressure drop, the wind speed rises. We were at 999 basically overnight. The new readings are 997. So within a couple hours of this thing passing over Honduras, the pressure has already dropped. You can see the cyclone spin uh, getting more and more uh, organized here. If I could find the actual... Here we go. Uh, now that it's left the north coast of Honduras, it's beginning to get that spin back. We are seeing those storms explode again. So that's why this is crunch time with this storm. We need to watch it really closely. Those of you that will be watching throughout the day, pay attention to the deep red colors that are blowing up through the middle of this. We may see an eye formation begin to form before it gets to Cancun. So once again, if it does hit Cancun, that's going to stunt its growth. It may keep it to a lower grade hurricane. Still going to be a lot of flooding and storm surge and in these areas that are prone to flooding. So that's why the state of emergencies have been issued. If this thing shoots the gap, guys, that's where we may be dealing with the major hurricane status. That is why I'm trying to explain it. That's why I'm sticking by it. And if it doesn't, good. I would love to be wrong about this. We don't want hurricanes to hit our homes, guys. Everyone, Some people think that I want hurricanes. No, I don't. I live near a coast. I was at risk of hurricanes this year. I went through Sandy. I lived in Florida for Hurricane George. I'm done with that. I do not want hurricanes. I don't wish them on anyone. All I'm doing is trying to bring awareness to these situations. And those of you that follow my videos, you know how I am. You know how these videos go, and you know what I try to do here. So I appreciate that. I appreciate the positive feedback down below. And guys, we just need to keep an eye on this thing. Today is a crucial day. We need to watch closely. Here is one of the models I'll show you. 
Uh, the CMC usually gets a little crazy sometimes. They are good at projecting storms forming. They are pretty bad at the storm's uh, path. But this one does show it's shooting the gap. It shows a little interaction with that system over Florida that we talked about. I believe that's going to be the reason this thing may shoot the gap. This storm or this system in Florida that was almost projected to become a tropical depression is influencing Nate. And it's pulling it to the east. And that's why those models, as we showed here, are beginning to shift into the gap. The low system attracts low systems. So they're beginning to interact, and it looks to me that this system that's uh, basically moving through Florida now is interacting with Nate, and it's pulling it up in this direction. If you notice on the chart here, they almost do like a little dance. It's called a Fujiwara effect. Even though we don't have a named storm here, it still is a low pressure, and you can see it almost picks up Nate, and it pulls it through that gap, and then pulls it right into the uh, Louisiana near Baton Rouge, guys, which is bad news, very prone to flooding. Um, they do have their water pumps, I guess, activated and stuff like that. But from what I've heard from some people down below in the comments, they haven't really uh, totally repaired all this stuff or brought it up to um, what it once was or what it should be at this point is what I'm trying to say. So again, guys, we still have risk of this thing shooting the gap. If it does that, that's where we may be dealing with those high-grade hurricane numbers. Uh, this thing still has the potential to rapidly grow. They are still talking about that on the Weather Channel. They would not be talking about it if it wasn't a possibility. These people do not like to look dumb. They want to be right all the time, so they are putting in the proper precautions. You can see on the Euro model, it shoots the gap. It interacts with the system right under Florida. Right here is that system. See that circle there? That is interacting with Nate, and they pull a little bit of a Fujiwara, and I think that's what's pulling Nate, at least according to some of the models, through this gap here. And that is worst-case scenario. We do not want this thing to pass through the gap. Unfortunately for Cancun, the U.S. wants this thing to hit Cancun only... Excuse me, only because that's what's going to slow it down before hitting the Gulf. We don't want it to hit anyone, guys. Let's be very clear on that. But these are what the models show, and unfortunately, Louisiana seems to be the target, possibly the, uh, obviously, the south of Mississippi as well. That's why these storm surge warnings are all over here, and that's why we are watching it. Uh, really quick, I wanted to point something else out. We have four tropical waves to watch right now, guys. Yes, four of them. Uh, these may develop, they may not develop, but I do want to point them out. If I can get the right brush highlighted here, I want you to look at a few things. One is here, this wave going this way like that, and then possibly uh, becoming cyclone formation. So we need to watch this area. There's another one actually right here, I believe it was the movements. For those of you that watch this stuff, you can go onto the radar and check these out yourself. There's two. Uh, we do have this one here that is still trying to form. I don't think that one's going to do much. But then if you look here, we have this one too. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if it's this one here or this one here that has that 30% chance in this area. We have 30% chance of formation in the middle of the Atlantic. I'm pretty sure it's this one here, so we got to keep an eye on that. We have this wave that came off of the West African coast that makes two. Then we have this wave that's currently moving across Florida that is going to interact with Nate. That would be three. And then we have a fourth wave by the Leeward and Lesser Antilles Islands. And that's four, with two more coming off the coast of West Africa, guys. So a lot of action going on, but main focus right now is Nate, which is right here. It's trying to reform in this area, and if it shoots the gap, we could be looking at a three to five category hurricane. If it comes here and clips Cancun, that may keep it down to a category one to two. That's what we want to see. Even though hurricanes are bad, if we need to pick from these two sets of circumstances, we would like a one or a two. Storm surge is going to be an issue no matter what, where my mouse is. You see those areas? They are preparing for flooding. That's just the deal. That's what's going on right now. All right, guys, I'm going to bring you a much much better detailed uh, video once I get off work. Um, I hate to leave you hanging like this, but I just got to go handle it, and that's it. So I will talk to you guys soon, a little bit uh, early this afternoon. All right, stay safe, everyone. Talk soon.